I recently ranked the last four chapters that we've gotten in One Piece, and I'll let you guys know at the end. While I'm talking about this chapter, you guys can think about the last four chapters, and I want you, by the end of this review, to give me your top four in ascending to descending order, I guess based off of enjoyment, the one that you enjoyed the most and the one that you enjoyed the least. I know it's not going to be a huge drop off because these chapters have been... <laughs> peak but i'd like to know your rankings let's get to it no introduction you know why we're here one piece chapter 1061 cover story well not for the cover story for the actual chapter but we're going to start with the cover story the vin smoke escaped not too many ways to slice it and dice it that's what happened they got away from katakuri got away from his future side because of caesar and his gas there are many ways to use gas in this world and that's one of the ways in which he did it and he accomplished his goals so kudos to caesar kudos to the vin smoke we knew it wasn't going to be a great outcome for katakuri and those people because it wasn't their story so i, I don't know not disappointed not mad it's just like huh, all right let me <laughs> Let me get to the chapter. The last chapter it ended with pretty much us finding out that Bonnie is here with us and she's going to be Law's replacement. Some people are triggered by the fact that I'm saying that, but it's not my fault you can't handle the truth. The truth is she's going to be replacing Law and following along with us and she's going to be the supernova representative other than Luffy and Zoro deal with it but the chapter ended off with her and we're starting off pretty much with her but if you notice in the last chapter luffy and chopper they flew away and then luffy at this chapter is saving bonnie as well but we have some extracurricular things going on because in the sea there's a giant shark and the giant shark what's it trying to do it's trying to eat everyone now this shark is humongous just the sheer scale of what we're looking at versus like just look at the sunny it is nuts it is a very, very big shark. When I saw this, I'm thinking Jaws. I'm thinking Deep Blue Sea. I'm just thinking as menacing as possible. I'm thinking Harlong, man. And then I saw the actual form and I'm like, okay, baby shark. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Perception versus reality. We're going to reel it back in. But that's what I was thinking. This shark was trying to devour the Straw Hats and the Sunny. How f how dare you do you understand what we went through when we lost the mary you will not take the sunny from us especially when we have the sun god right we have the sunny and we have the first son of the sea baby let's go i love when oda uses characters to tell us things that we already know like we can already perceive because i was looking at him like man it's really big and it looks metal and lo and behold next panel zora says man it was really big and it, and it looks metal i was like oda like I'm following your story, bro. I, I get it. Even without you saying anything. But again, the sheer scale of it, even the characters in the story notice, just like we notice reading the story. Continue when then Luffy fell into the sea because that's what Luffy does. He, he falls into the sea sometimes and he's not going to swim out. So somebody has to go on for him. Lucky enough, we have a warlord on our crew, a fishman on our crew, and also the first son of the sea, Jinbei. Let's go! At times, Jinbei's role may seem useless, like he's just steering the ship, but he's the best helmsman out there because he understands waves more than any of them. He tells Frankie to steer the ship while he goes and saves Luffy, Chopper, and Bonnie because they all fell into the water. Now, remember that metal shark I was telling you guys about? First off, it has punk on the side of it, and it has missiles inside of its mouth. So it seems ferocious. It seems like it is sentient, but it's it has cannons. It's almost like Queen, but upgraded and i guess better he's not doing random dances and making meaningless dialogue and making me laugh all the time okay those are all the great things about queen it's just bigger and it's doing the same things so it fires a torpedo it does not hit the sunny but it hits close enough to it that the ship is capsized and at the moment we see jimbei going underwater to save bonnie chopper and luffy because devil fruit users cannot swim they were they were unfortunately about to die and just like the beginning of any one piece arc it is tumultuous the waves are crazy the dialogue is all over the place and we're trying to figure out how the straw hats are going to get out of this because we have this large baby big shark trying to kill them trying to eat them trying to blow them up while i'm reading trying to figure out okay where the hell did the shark come from then you think back to the actual title the island of the future or something of that sort i'm like okay where are we luffy bonnie and chopper are now saved and and I see a big machine punching the shark in the water. Frankie! Frankie saved us! They're like, what? Wait, is that Frank? Is this a- Wait, that's not even Frank. Wait, 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 wait. What is going on? So many different robots and advances. I'm like, wait, we're not about to get what I think we're about to get, are we? But I didn't want to get my hopes up, right? Didn't want to get my hopes up. And as quickly as things escalated in that specific sequence, it died down because we transitioned to another scene. This scene? 
Well, the character we haven't seen in a long time, Tashigi. It was really cool seeing Tashigi again, especially based on how things went the last time. Didn't go as great for her, but she's just a great person. It's like, yeah, I want to see Tashigi again. It's like, yeah, but also, where is he? You know who the he I'm talking about. We don't see him yet, but we're looking at the kids, and the kids do look noticeably smaller, and I think this chapter is somewhat about scale, and Otis showing us just how big things are, and how small things are, and based on the scale, we're evaluating. So Mocha and the others, they look like they have shrunk, and Tashigi has supposedly been taking care of them. I'm not sure the exact time that has passed from Punk Hazard to now, but it's been a shit ton. So I expect some characters to be stronger, maybe even have some different designs. Either way, it was really nice seeing Tashigi again. But the person I want to talk about here, not just him, and you know who him is, right? Because <coughs> getting a little smoky in here. The person that I really want to talk about is Katakuri's sister, Dog. Self-styled. Okay, self-styled Katakuri sister by Brago. Doll. Okay, because there's no way in this chapter that says she is. I'm just looking at the attire and I'm looking at her from the back. And I'm like, yo, that looks like Katakuri. Not not just looking at her from the back. Because that, that would be a little weird. But she gives me a Katakuri vibe. Just really cool, really sleek, goth, chain around the neck. Oh, mommy, let's do it. And the lips are banging the shortcut doll. My doll face. Why are you here? Either way, she's complaining about Helmepo because Helmepo apparently is crying like a little bitch because Colby has been captured, but Colby's his best friend, so I understand it. Like, has your best friend ever been captured by a world-renowned pirate that has two devil fruits, big as hell, fat as hell, and does not care about anything other than Silva's really showing up and flexing his clout on him? No, it doesn't happen to anyone. So for Colby, this is a very unique experience, and Helmepo, he's just trying to show us and tell us, hey, we should be empathetic towards that situation. Yeah. The others are worried as well. Don't get it twisted. Hibari is worried as well as Tashigi. And we even got some other new characters, but Kobe is their senpai. Like the name we've been throwing around, right? Is Pink Mamba. I I'm not sure if it's going to stick. I hope it does. But Kobe, he's gotten some acclaim, some fame, even though I feel like the hero epithet a bit forced because I don't have context of the Rocky Port incident. I am I am allowed to change my mind if things do change and more information is revealed. That's that's how the world works. I'm not going to double down after I find out Kobe defeated hella characters by himself and so many different outrageous. No, I'm going to change my mind and say, hey, I'll take the L. I'll take the L. I'm going to call Kobe as many heroes as you want to be called. All right. I'll take the L. But we're being introduced to so many different Marines, rare admirals and admirals. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. When we get introduced to an admiral or rare admiral, the taste in my mouth, it just evaporates because I know they're just going to be mid, right? They're just going to be like unseasoned steak. And that's not something anybody would want, especially if you're paying for it. So I temper my expectations. Here's the silver lining. These Marines, a lot of them are a part of SOAR, the organization that's destined to take down Emu and those those bigots that sit atop the red line, the celestial dragons. So I'm like, okay, they have plot importance. Maybe something might come of them. And then even a cool tidbit that my chat let me know while I was reacting. And also if you look down, there's a sub button because if you made it this far, you're having a good time. We're having banter. We're going back and forth. We're drinking. We're locking eyes and we're developing a connection. And so that connection to sub button, sub the channel, drop a like. But seriously, some of the character designs were fire. I mentioned my baby doll face, but Gruss or Gruss, however you want to say it. They look almost barbaric, like they are about that action. Something I was going to mention is in chapter 966 in the cover story, the Capone gang beige cover story, where Chiffon was trying to be or was about to be apprehended. Gruss or Gruss was in that chapter, in that cover story. Really, really neat how this community is amazing. Like how many things people find within... I don't know, minutes or hours of the chapter coming out. And that's that that was one of them. They're still talking about Kobe and they're saying, well, we don't know where X Drake is. And I'm like, oh, well, shit, we don't know either. So you can't tell us where he is because he left a while ago. Either X Drake has skipped town and he went back to Dinosaur Island because he retired after getting his ass beat by a poo or he's dead next to Hawkins. And that's it for X Drake, right? He was not the 10th crewmate, even though he had X Drake, Diaz Drake, in his name. Okay, there's one more option. He just hasn't made it there yet, right? It's been more than a few days because we had a time skip in Wano seven days after everything happened. Then we had even another time skip and then even more time passed while we were traveling. Where are these n****s? Like, where are you? There's no way he's still in Wano, right? 
where would he go? So X-Drake is a real mystery because he seems to be the leader of this specific squad. They mentioned deploying a Seraphim as well, which shows that maybe every base has a couple or a few Seraphims on standby that they can use in case the threat comes by. I don't know how strong the Seraphims are, but they have elite faith in them if they're willing to have those people there pretty much protecting Vegapunk. Like, let's just keep it a bean. That base is that near to Vegapunk because Vegapunk is such a viable or important asset. They have to protect him or her right? We can't leave that out. Him or her. Bonnie. Bonnie had me feeling some type of way this chapter. I, in the middle of my reaction, I had to go and change three times just because Bonnie, she made me forget about Dollface for a second. And Oda, were you writing this chapter with me in mind? Because the shots, the side boobs, the eyes, just the lips, it felt partial. It felt like Oda was trying to tell us, tell me something about these female characters. It's time for another top 30 sexiest One Piece females. One day, because I think they deserve it. Either way, Law's replacement Bogey is saying, hey, what's up with you? Are you dying your hair black and white? Because your hair was white on your poster. What's going on here? And the Luffy responds, that's how I feel when I'm totally free. If I'm Bonnie, I'm like, what the hell are you talking about, sir? Did you dye your hair or fucking not? She does not ask a follow-up question. And Luffy was asked about his crew. He's like, well, they'll figure it out. Which, at this point, after facing two Yonko, I wouldn't be too worried about my crew either. Like, they'll figure it out. We're just lost and broke, I guess. Bonnie's saying that she got here using her ship and that her crew is nowhere to be seen. She is riding solo, mostly because she has a top secret mission. You can't bring hell and into Mary Joa and expect you're going to sneak around transforming. They see you with Bonnie. They see you with Connie. They're like, okay, wait, what's going on here? So I understand an espionage mission like that. You go it alone. Unless those people were definitely just dead, dead after Blackbeard because Blackbeard was stabbing a couple of them. And basically because of Kuma, she hasn't replaced her crew yet. She's just been desperately trying to get back to him. It could be a 3D 2Y where they had a two year time skip after that. And they're going to meet up at some point. Maybe she passed the deadline. Who knows? But that's just how it goes sometimes. The Straw Hats have no idea where they are i have no idea where they are and i've been looking at a one piece map profusely over the past few days expected to be scotches or kaido's favorite island because it's snowy that was a good guess no this is egghead never been to egghead never heard of egghead heard of eggman and that makes you think about his chapter with sonic the machines which could have been the inspiration that's vegapunk's island this is vegapunk's research lab wow we're here boys we made it here to vegapunk and we do catch a glimpse of vegapunk before the chapter ends but technology has always been an underrated power I made a video about that saying technology is a great equalizer yes they got beaten by a cyborg or a shark that was trying to kill them a cyborg was trying to help them but in this case matchup situation location played such an integral role something that Oda always talked about before was that he wanted to draw more pirate battles on the sea and someone is like okay well it's on you and he's like all right i guess i gotta do something but as we continue we see someone walk out and they say something i think was very interesting this shark ship was created for a specific purpose but it has goals to report scout and fire not to eat because this person is trying to bring back evidence and things being sacrificed Salvage. but if the shark is programmed to do one thing and it's doing another like she's saying overriding primal instincts could be impossible that makes me think about other characters if she if she's actually using boy hancock's hair she's gonna lose it when she sees luffy if mihawk is actually used once he sees shanks he may go crazy this trope is very popular in anime where somebody that's really creative really a genius but they come somewhat downplay themselves this is what it is with Professor Vegapunk, ladies and gentlemen, this is who this is. Did not expect this, right? I knew I wanted Vegapunk at the end of Wano, coming into Wano, not really at the end of Wano, like the end of Wano going into the next arc. So many things to talk about because next arc, what happens? Is it going to be Elbaf? How long is this arc, right? This is the Egghead arc where we find out about Vegapunk. Like we're going to find out about Devil Fruits. This is the arc for that, but we always have to have forward thinking. So what's going to be next? We'll talk about that next time. But also my order, let's end it there. What are my order in regards to ascending to descending chapters? So I'm sorry, 1058. This is a chapter with the new emperors. This is when Luffy's proclaimed an emperor, but we also see Cross Guild, their lines, their backstory, so much in this chapter, jam packed, and it was entertaining to the brim. Next chapter is the Captain Kobe incident where we have Kobe going against Blackbeard and Boy Hancock really showing up, Blackbeard walking away because of Rayleigh's clout and ultimately Kobe being kidnapped. Just an amazing chapter as well, but slightly behind Cross Guild because I think just the scale of everything that's going on was a bit higher in Cross Guild and how much it changed the 
story. 1060 was a doozy because this is the chapter in which we have Emu, we have Sabo, we have Luffy and his inexplicable dream that he didn't choose to talk to us about. And also we have Vivi talking about Vivi conversing in the crew and also the interactions is what I really enjoyed revolutionaries revelations new powers the world government it is so much going on in this chapter it is an instant classic in my mind all these are but this one kind of broke me I'm not gonna lie and of course this chapter is next 1061 with Vegapunk what's gonna happen here now there are a few things I want to point out Vegapunk I don't think that's him or her I think it could just be a body, a stand-in, because we have the numbers on the chest. If you go back and look at some of the other mechs, they have numbers as well. This is number two. Where's number one? Is he number one or number zero? Because there's so many important questions I need to ask him, because man, this is crazy. Overall, the chapter is fantastic. Finally meeting Vegapunk, who we think is Vegapunk, is fantastic, because this person has so much knowledge that far surpasses what we've already seen, and we saw it in this chapter one by one by one, from Caesar to Judge to Frankie. Vegapunk is superior. So I guess we gotta wait and see what happens with her to see if it's actually Vegapunk. I'm leaning towards no, but most of us do think that she's not actually Vegapunk and she's not an imposter, but it could be a hive mind. And Vegapunk is instilling his sentience, his likeness, his being into each of these clones. And that's how you have the Vegapunk 2, Vegapunk 1, Vegapunk 3. I just hope it's not a twice situation where you actually start hating each other based on everything that's going on. But I think it's a great concept if he does go that way because we're 500 years into the future. So having a proxy is not necessarily a bad thing. Additional security measures. It helps with infiltration. It's just a brilliant idea if it's not that difficult to pull off. I wonder what Bonnie knows. I wonder what Bonnie's going to say. How is she going to salvage this? Because she has issues with whatever's going on here. She's going to talk to Vegapunk, and if Caesar's there, it's definitely going to be tricky. But guys, give me your thoughts. H how do you feel about this chapter, all right? I thought it was pretty fantastic, refreshing, new straw hats, not new straw hats, but seeing the straw hats together again is great. New straw hat adventure, new characters, old characters that we love, and of course, my baby doll face. But guys, again, make sure you like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter at BroccoDAce. Follow me on Instagram at BroccoDAce. Thank to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank to my members. I sincerely appreciate you guys as well. But again, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Start doubting me, I felt lost. I